today I want to talk about the books that I read in April. Um, I've been reading a lot lately and I've been in a reading rush, if you may. And honestly, my parents are just tired of listening to me talk about books for two hours straight. So this is all I have left. Um, to give you a little bit of background history on my reading, um, I've loved reading since I was like 12 something around that um but i've never really been like a consistent reader but now that i think about it i've never really been consistent with anything in my life before so i don't really know what i expected but <laughs> yeah that was mostly because i was too broke to buy any books i still am however i now have access to a library so I want to talk about the books that I read in April specifically um, so this is gonna be like a wrap-up thing I'm gonna like explain what the book is about and give a review I guess on the book but the thing is <laughs> I have like two brain cells I am not very eloquent but we're gonna get through this are you sure about that so we started April by reading they both died at the end by Adam Sidoeira in this book, you get a call, they think they're gonna die. So basically, how it works, the people at Deathcast, which is the company that knows that you're gonna die, um, they call you, they hit you up between 12 and 3 a.m. and they're like, hey boo, you're gonna die today. So then you can live your last day, like, it's your last day. So we follow the story of two boys, Mateo and Rufus. And they both get the call on the same day and they meet through this app called The Last Friend App, uh, which is an app basically when you need a friend on your last day or you want to be a friend for someone on their last day. So they meet through this app and they decide to spend their last day together. We have Mateo who is very shy and like he's really scared of everything and only has like one friend and doesn't go to par parties at all. And honestly, now that I think about it, I am Mateo. Maybe that's why I found him kind of annoying. Okay, well, <coughs> we have that. Um, and then we also have Rufus, and he's basically the opposite. He's like more outgoing and more confident. He has friends. But even though they're opposites, they connect over the fact that they're both dying on the same day. Um, I gave this book three stars. I found it very interesting to see how like society worked in this book, like in this world. How like a lot of it revolves around the death cast company and the fact that you get a call that you, when you're gonna die. However, I do wish the world building would have been a little bit more developed, but I, I mean, that wasn't what the book was about, like we don't even know how the company knows that they are gonna die. For example, um, Deckers, who are the people who get the call, um, they get like free access to stuff because it's their last day and there's like places specially made for Deckers, like there's this place where you can go if you want to like travel the world but of course you don't have the time so you get to like meet other cultures and kind of um go to other places but like still being safe and not wasting time on like flying or whatever i was expecting to be like heartbroken by this book but i just wasn't it was fun to see these two characters um kind of live a whole life in one day and see them like conquer their fears and do stuff that they've always wanted to do but i just didn't connect with them that much um I found, as I already said, I found Mateo kind of annoying. <laughs> like, the characters were just so unreal. <laughs> like, for example, there's this one part, well, there's a bunch of parts actually. So, Mateo's supposed to be this, like, very good, innocent, pure kid. Well, he's not a kid, he's like 18. But, you know, you get what I mean. But then, instead of, like, just showing that, they make him say it. Like, he says, like, Mateo himself says, like, oh yeah. Like, I am good, I do good because I love the people. And it's like, no, you don't say that. Like, it's just, that's just not how it works. So I don't know, I just, I didn't like that. The book also felt kind of slow, but that maybe was also because I was trying to make this book last because I'd gotten it from the library like right before quarantine started. And then the library closed, of course. 
and I was like, well, this is my last book. This is it. That's that's it for me. I hadn't discovered that you could borrow ebooks from the library yet, but so you know, I thought that this was like my last option. So I was trying to make it last. I made it last like two weeks. <laughs> so maybe that's also why I felt kind of slow. But it didn't live up to the expectations I had for this book, you know. I was expecting to like be crying at the end, sobbing and like just fall in love with the characters, but I just didn't. So um yeah. However, I do appreciate the representation in this book. Of course, there's um, LGBTQ plus um, representation and also Latinx representation, which I don't see a lot in books. So I appreciate that. You know, this book can mean a lot to people. They can see themselves in the characters. So that's why I appreciate it. But I just expected more. And none of that was given to me. So three stars. So after that one, I read The Martian by Andy Weir. This was my first ebook ever because I discovered that you could borrow ebooks from a library. So I've been doing that. I've been reading on this thing. <laughs> it's my mom's really old tablet, but it works, you know? So, so yeah, it was my first ebook. I was always like opposed to ebooks. They're not my favorite still, but you know, it's better than nothing. So yeah, anyway, this book, I mean, you've probably seen the movie, but this book is about Mark Watney and he's stranded in Mars. So he's an astronaut and he is on a mission with his crew in Mars and you know stuff goes down <laughs> and he gets stranded in Mars all by himself. So basically there's a dust storm and he nearly dies and his crew they leave him because they think he's dead and now he's all alone in a different planet. <laughs> this book is just so good. I had originally like given it four stars, but now that I think about it, honestly, it deserves five stars. Like it's just so good. I was always like at the edge of my seat and I did not want to stop reading. It, it was just that good, you know? And the characters are very realistic. Um, there is a lot of like science-y stuff that the author explains very thoroughly. And honestly, I just feel like that makes it look more real but it did hurt my brain sometimes <laughs> and I'm not sure I even like understood like all of it but it's still an amazing book you know it, not even that but it's also funny like I remember like literally laughing out loud reading this book because it's just that good okay so read this book it is so good maybe if you don't want your brain to hurt maybe like don't read it but it's just it is so good I loved it and honestly it felt real okay it felt so real <laughs> like if you told me like yeah this was a real story I would be like yes it was anyway after that I read allegedly by Tiffany D Jackson so in this book the main character is Mary she's a black girl she's 15 years old if I'm not mistaken and basically when she was nine years old she killed the baby allegedly what happens is Mary's mother was babysitting Alyssa, the baby, <laughs> and something happens and the baby's dead. Mary never like actually says anything, she does not speak, she never like says I did it or I didn't do it, but she's still convicted as an adult. So as I said, the story takes place when Mary is 15 and she's in a group home after she's been in baby jail, baby jail for years. In the group home is awful and disturbing and it's just that's an understatement before mary had never like tried to say anything she had never admitted to the crime or said that she was innocent but now she's pregnant so of course the state's not gonna let her keep the baby so she wants to get the truth out i gave this book four stars because it, it was really good i don't know why but i wasn't expecting much from it just because i found it like randomly in goodreads but it was just really good I, I'm pretty sure I read it in like a day or two because it was just so engrossing and I just wanted to like know not only what was gonna happen but also what happened before because we don't get that like from the beginning so it's just yeah it was really good I wasn't that happy with the ending though so that's mostly why I gave it four stars but the book also talks about very important topics like race and how that affects like the system or the law 
and it's just a really good book i like really felt for the characters and i was like in pain and not a light read because it does talk about some like heavy stuff um just it's really good and totally recommended after that you know we're, we're going on a good streak right now but <laughs> after that i read release by patrick ness um this book okay i don't i don't even know how to explain this book because it's just so confusing like i don't i'm not even sure i understand what happened there basically we follow two different stories that occur like in the same day they're like parallel to each other he said he's a gay teenage boy and basically we follow his journey to self-acceptance and self-love and it's very hard for him because he's the son of a preacher so we already know what's going on there honestly i loved this story so much it was just so beautiful and it talked about very normal things that are usually talked about in books it talks about homophobia um toxic relationships including toxic family relationships um sexual harassment specifically to boys which isn't that talked about really and it's just a beautiful story however we also have this fantasy paranormal weird story thing going on parallel to adam's story so it's basically about this girl who was murdered by her boyfriend and they're both meth addicts if i'm not mistaken so basically the ghost comes back and then there's also this like queen there, there's like something about like spirits and there's like there's this queen, but it's not actually a queen, it's like a spirit, and then there's like fawn, and I'm like... What is even happening? Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, I kept, like at the beginning, I was like, yeah, this is gonna make sense later. Like, they're gonna explain how like these two stories kind of correlate to each other, and it's gonna make sense, but it never made sense. Okay, that never came. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened there okay maybe i am just too dumb to like even see that the message is there because i just never found it like i don't know what was the point of that story the stories don't connect to each other like at all they're happening in the same place at the same time but there's no real connection between them like i i remember just like i remember just being like i just want to get back to adam's story when i was reading um this paranormal thing and you could even like skip all the chapters to talk about this story and you would be fine like maybe the ending would be like a, a little weird it was weird but like weirder weirder but you could just skip all the chapters and you would be fine like that's how detached from each other they are <laughs> we're all I just wish this story, this book would have been just about Adam and his story because that would have been much better if it, if that was if, if that had that you um you had you 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 could you if that had been the case I would have given this book like four stars honestly um but yeah if you're into weird stuff that dumb people don't get the meaning of maybe this is the book for you because <laughs> i just do not understand what the hell happened there so after that i read of curses and kisses by sandia menon so this is a beauty and the beast retelling so it's a very cute book <laughs> um it tells the story of jaya rao and gray emerson so basically jaya is a missouri princess and she's the heir to the throne and India doesn't have a, actually a feudal system anymore, but the royal family, the previous royal family, is still treated as royalty. So this is basically what we see here. Um, the Emersons, which is a British family, aka colonizers, they stole a sacred jewel from the Rao family, and in retaliation, Jaya's great grandmother, if I'm not mistaken, she cursed the jewel and the Emerson family. <laughs> So of course all of this caused a generation long feud between the two families even though the Rao family doesn't really believe in the curse. Now Jaya loves her family and would do anything for her country and she takes her role as heir to the throne very seriously. But 
her younger sister, she was publicly ashamed. So after the whole scandal, um, their parents decided to send them to a boarding school far away. <laughs> and it's like an elite boarding school. And basically, Jaya has developed this plan because she wants to break Gray's heart. Gray, the youngest one in the Emerson family, he's this very like reserved guy, you know, like the beast or whatever. And it's mostly because he knows that he's gonna die when he's 18 years old because of the curse. So we see Jaya like try to make him fall in love with her and stuff. And you know, we all know what ends up happening. And yeah, I really did like this book. I just wish the transition between like friendship to lovers or love would have been a little bit like smoother. There wasn't this like slow transition between the two, you know, when they like start realizing their feelings or whatever. Overall, it, it is a good book. Um, I would totally recommend it if you're looking for something like light and full of romance to read. Uh, it's just a nice book, you know, it makes you feel warm and fussy inside. And yeah, um, I give this book three stars, so it's not anything life-changing, but I did like it. It is a good book. It's a solid book. This book is the first in a trilogy, if I'm not mistaken. And I think the trilogy, each of the books is just like a different retelling of fairy tale. I think the next one is Princess and the Frog, and I think it features my favorite character from the first book. So I am very excited about that. Um, I'm gonna keep reading the series just because it's just a really nice book. And yeah, you know, sometimes I just don't wanna read anything that is like that deep or heavy or makes my brain hurt. I just wanna read a nice romance book, you know? <laughs> so this is what this book is. So after that, I read Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I have very mixed feelings about this book. Um, I'm not really sure how to summarize it because there's just a lot happening in this book and I'm not sure if that's like a good thing. But I found this review on Goodreads that I think really, you know, explains what the book is. Uh, so I'm just gonna read it. It's... I'm gonna bring my laptop over here. It is by Chai. <laughs> She says, just dropping down to say, this book is like Hogwarts for murderers where they teach sex ed and teachers are allowed to poison their students or casually hack off their arms. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, Mia's father was a traitor and he was executed in front of all the people of the country. This book takes place in this world where they have like three sons and they're like their gods or whatever. So yeah, her dad was executed and she wants to kill the three people that were involved in that or, you know, are responsible for the death of her dad. So to achieve this, because these three people are very powerful and she, it's not that easy to get to them, she joins the Red Church, which is kind of like a cult for killers. I'm not really sure how to explain what it is, but they have like their own god or whatever, it's the lady of blessed murder or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, she has to train and pass all these like tests to become a blade for the church so then she can kill in the name of the church. So we see her become this like very skilled assassin. And to explain the other plots in the book, I'm just gonna read from the synopsis because I it's just so much happening. So it says but a killer is loose within the church's halls. The bloody secrets of Mia's past return to haunt her, and her plot to bring down the entire congregation is unfolding in the shadows she so loves. I gave this book three stars because even though the world building is great, like the world in this book, it is solid, and the story itself is interesting, the characters not so much, but the writing, the writing is just irritating. I just found it very obnoxious and way too descriptive, like unnecessary descriptive. And when I was reading, I just wanted to like pull my hair out because I was like, why am I reading this? Like, I don't want to read this. I don't want to do this because it reminded me of Throne of Glass and I hated that series, okay? I read until the sixth book, so you can't tell me I didn't try, but I just couldn't because the writing was just excruciatingly painful, you know? So. 
I mean, I still think the story kind of compensates that the writing is bad. Um, but still, like, the characters are not that good either. There's no, like, character development, like, who is she? We don't know her. And the characters are just boring. Well, not boring. They're all, like, murderers. But I just didn't, like, connect with them in any way, shape, or form. And, like, my favorite character it was, like, Ashlyn. And we all know how that ended, so... Still saying my favorite character is like a bit of a stretch because it was only my favorite because she was the one that had like some type of personality so i don't think that's good but apparently i like hate myself and i continued the series i don't know why i do this to myself like, i could hate a book and i would still keep reading on like the series and it's like why would i do that you know however it worked out this time because i actually liked the second book I'm so glad it's a trilogy because I am tired of eight book series. Okay, why do authors do that? Like, do we really need that? No. Just stop. Anyway, after that, I read Macy Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear. And this book, I don't really know how to explain it either because, like, not a lot happens. At least I just feel like not a lot happened. So, basically, we follow the story of Macy Dobbs. And she's a private investigator investigator in the 1930s. Um, I think it's in the 1930s. I mean, I know it's like after the First World War, um, but I'm not sure specifically in what year. She's this smart, good, beautiful, empathetic, perfect woman. And after serving in the First World War as a nurse, she has opened her own like private investigator business thing. So we see both her past and her present. Um, her past as in like the years she was in the war and also the years, like her teenage years before the war and how she ended up like serving as a nurse. In the present she has this case that it looks very like shallow and very like simple to solve but she feels that there's more to it and it's actually way deeper than that. This mystery case wasn't that, like that interesting wasn't that interesting to me like at all I'm not even sure the book had like the climax it did i don't know where it was okay it, it was just this was me like the whole book my emotions were like here the book was like here it was it was not you know it was not very exciting i did find macy's thoughts very like interesting to read she was very bland but you know it was very interesting <laughs> to see like her thought process on things um so i think that's why i gave it like three stars because i didn't like hate this book i like maybe now looking back at it it's like ooh, you know but while reading it i was like oh this this is fine <laughs> um i gave it three stars maybe it deserves less than that i don't really know okay but it was just a very light read <laughs> So I was gonna tell you guys that this is like the first book in the series and I was looking up how many books there are in this series and um there is 15 books in the Macy Top series. I was planning on reading like the next one, but I'm just not doing the whole 15 book series thing, okay? I'm not I'm not doing that. Okay, I am not gonna put myself through that. Anyway, um, after that, I read Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly. Basically, this book tells the story of Cinderella's stepsisters. Um, it takes place after Cinderella gets her happy ending and, you know, after the stepsisters try to fit in this glass slipper by cutting, cutting off their toes. But of course, we all know that did not work. <laughs> this story is just really beautiful and I loved it a lot. It is very like empowering and you know, it made me very happy. It talks about trying to fit in a society that does not accept you for who you are and tries to change the way you are. And it's just a beautiful coming of age story. And you know, we see like how the stepsisters live and why they did that um, the character development in this story is it is so great okay it is really good 
um, well, maybe I wouldn't say like great, but it's really good. <laughs> it talks about feminism and being your own person and all of that. Especially if you're a girl, I would recommend that you read this book. So yeah, again, this book also made me feel like warm and fuzzy inside because it was just really good and really sweet. And yeah, I give it four stars because it wasn't like a masterpiece, you know, but it, it, it was just really good. And I was very happy with that. Anyway, those are all the books that I read in April. Basically, I read like eight books. Nine if you count the book that I read for my English class, but like it's like literally this big. So we're not gonna talk about that. Um, but yeah, I read eight books. That's like surprising to me. I've never read that much before in a month. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys have been reading. Also, let me know if you guys have read any of the books that I talked about in this video and let me know your opinions on it so yeah that's basically it um stay safe take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next one bye